here live from episode five on a culture conversation i'm your host twin gq from tgq inc platform we're here joined by a special guest um you know somebody i look up to in this space a pioneer for a lot of canadian athletes like myself uh, a community leader my good friend and dear brother mike what's happening man thank you for having me yeah for sure for sure bro some love right there yeah yeah so yeah, we had yeah. we had the pleasure of having you on the first season man and you know it was a great great conversation you know we had a candid conversation of sports a little bit about community stuff um had an opportunity to work with you on your camp so just kind of tell me what's up man what's new with you and how how everything is going uh first and foremost man thank you for having me on this platform um i've seen how much it's grown from first season to second season so congratulations to you first and foremost thank for the you, work man. that you've been putting in appreciate it i see i seen from the start from the bottom now we're yeah. here right? <laughs> <laughs> for sure for sure for sure so um that's super cool to see and uh you know i'm good you know as long as i'm healthy my family's good uh, the people that i love are straight i'm always going to be straight yeah for sure and you know i see you you know grinding man in the gym man and you know i see a lot of things are coming to fruition you know tell me a little bit about your off season how how, well, not an off season to you, but how how have you been able to adapt to you know your workouts, knowing that you know this summer we had the whole COVID stuff. So how did you kind of transcend into working out outside and not having the opportunity to get into the gyms as much? Well, you know, you hit it right on the money. It's like we're in a new world order. Like we're living in unfamiliar times. It's something brand new to all of us. So all of us have had to adjust some sort of way, some sort of how. Yeah. So for me, I just had to. Getting the, getting the gym some with, with Seamus, you know. Yeah. That's, the, that's my right hand man. For those of you that don't know, that's my trainer. Yeah. That's someone that uh, was a big part of my summer and a big part of my career. Um, every season, whenever I come back in the off season, I come to Toronto, I work out with him. So um, we had to kind of readjust, be outdoors with it. <laughs> I know a lot of people saw the workouts online, but um, it's just everyone had to adjust, man. It's so crazy what's going on in the world. And um, I'm just grateful that I have a good team. You know, I have a really good team. I've had access to gyms in the city when a lot of people haven't had access to it. So I'm just grateful that I still get to work on my craft and perfect this as much as I can until I go away. But with that time being, with the time being, um, I found my new motivation in the kids. Like you, you hit it on the money when you talked about the camp. Um, that kind of got my my love for the joy and the game back. This whole summer, you know, I wake up at six in the morning to get to to it, you know. Yeah, and you it's know, yeah. it's crazy because you you never really you know see the influence you have on people, especially the kids, you know. And I I know that, like I always tell you, when we were coming up, we were looking at the staple heads in the city, uh, a guy like Corey or yourself per se, where you you influenced a lot of the young cats coming up, you know. And now you having the opportunity to now like grind with the kids, mm -hmm. you know, and that that kind of changes everything, you know. A lot of these kids in this this day and age like we said they don't really get the opportunity to to rub fa uh rub shoulders with guys like a uh, Kevin Durant or you know a uh, Kyrie Irving per se so for a person like you to continue to come back down to your community and connect with these kids is good man and we talked about your camp you know obviously a lot of people didn't really see the I guess the, the finished product but just kind of talk about that process of you know how that camp came to fruition and obviously I had the opportunity to kind of build with you there but mm -hmm. For, for those of um, that are watching that don't really have the opportunity to know about that camp, I'm just kind of tell them, enlighten them about that process. Well, first, it was just to be active in the community where I'm from. You know, COVID is not normal for a lot of people, and a lot of families are affected in lower-income neighborhoods just all around the world, not just in Toronto. So I felt like with me being here, um, I had a lot of friends that were very skilled in their professions and very respected in their professions that came and we put our strategies together. You're one of them, Seamus being one of them, um, Juice, I can go down the line, uh, yeah. to Ben, who you brought along, um, and Barbara, you know, just so many people that came together to make it work. And a lot of people in the community got involved. Square Boys, shout out to Square Boys. Yes, sir, yes, sir. All day, every day, till I die, Saviki on the bun. Mm -hmm. you can put a little extra mayonnaise on that thing if you can. Yeah. <laughs> Um, but yeah, we just had the whole community come together and like-minded people that had one thing in mind and one goal, which was making this summer for kids, man. This was not a, a summer that they saw coming, anyone saw coming. So as much as we could be involved in the community, we, we made it happen and we gave these kids something that's going to go 
a lot further than just this summer. Like I say, nonprofit organizations are the uni- the new universities, you know? Oh. Um, I think what we taught these kids for this little section for three days goes beyond you know, beyond what they could have got taught at school this year, for real. Yeah. You know, we had kids from different neighborhoods, um, different kind of housing incomes. Meet at one. We had Pat, who opened the door case, you know, Lorette, everyone at Eastview that opened the doors for us. It was what is not going to be possible without them. And we all just had one goal in mind, which is to make this camp happen for kids. Absolutely. And it was it was an incredible experience um, for me, actually, just seeing the look on these kids' face at the end of the camp, or as Kat commenced, you know, it was, it was crazy because, you know, all summer, like you said, they're going through unprecedented times. You know, and you talk about the kids getting together to, to play outside and to, to socialize with kids of, you know, their own age group is, is imperative, you know. And um, for a person like you now that has that platform to amplify your voice for, you know, people like us, it's, it's very important that you continue to, you know, utilize your platform. You know, you talk about, you know, your career emerging as, a, as an athlete. Um, you know, getting into post-career, um, I think, is community work something that you're going to continue to kind of dive into? Uh, that's something I've been doing since I was in high school, man. Mm-hmm. You know, like, I remember when I was in high school when we used to win tournaments and win, like, championships. I was giving my trophies away to people. Like, I never kept anything. I was surprised when I came back home and I was finding things in my mom's place. I'm like, yo, I thought I gave everything away. <laughs> like, how did y'all have this? And I was like, damn, we won a lot. <laughs> yeah. Because, you know, winning is what will always drive everything and what I do. But for me, being involved in the community, that's that's winning on a higher on a higher scale. Mm. That's that's that goes beyond the basketball court when you're winning your community and having an impact and on the next generation because they're next, you know. What they see me do, I know they copy, you know, how I wake up every morning, I see these kids looking at my now we're in, you know, social media day Absolutely. and age, you know, I see all the kids from camp looking at my story. Yeah. I'm like, yo, Carter's up at six. Yeah. <laughs> he's watching my story, yeah. bro. It's like, like, it's, like, it's like the whole thing, like practice what you preach type You know, thing. and yeah. he's seeing it and he's seeing it because he knows like, yo, damn, like, all right, that's the guy I look up to. He's really doing what he practices, what he preached, mm. you know, and I think that was everyone along the camp. And, um, that just goes testament to, to what we're trying to do in the community, you know, it's just uh, be visible. And not only that, um, be a voice that they could trust. You know, I think um, when you with with kids and how it goes nowadays, what I see, I need to see it to believe it. And I think what we've done this summer, and I think what everyone has done, you know, you could see it. And I'm definitely going to believe it. I was a believer in season one, and now you're in season two. I already seen this. Next up, by the way, we're going to be on OWN Network, ESPN. Yeah. What's up? What's good? Yeah. Um, you know, it's just that on that scale. It's just to know that we, we're doing it for the right reasons. And whenever you, I feel like when you do things for the right reasons, um, your, your fruit of your labor will just come back tenfold and you won't even know it hit you. Absolutely. And it's, it's crazy. Now we we're in the space of multimedia, um, you being an artist as well, having the opportunity to, you know, spread conscious music as well. Um, talked a little bit about uh, that TSN special that they were doing. I know they came out to the camp. So um, that storytelling aspect for yourself is something that, uh, you know, I think, like you said, it's you, you can give it back to the, the next generation coming up. So just kind of talk to us a little bit about that. Um, this, is, this whole summer, man, I've been so busy in the city. Like, despite everything going on, like a lot of people have been trying to find out the story. And, like, I was a mystique for a long time, you know, I didn't open up a lot about my story. I kind of just kept to myself a little bit just because I was, like, so driven, you know. When you're so driven and goal-oriented and, like, so focused on getting somewhere, you forget to kind of, like, look, you know, side to side. And I kind of had the time to sit still with COVID and I had the time to, like, analyze everything. I was like, you know, I could be helping the next generation a little bit more. So that's just where it just stemmed from, from that aspect. And everything else that came after that came after that. You know, it's just me being on pause and being able to be in a city that I love dearly since day one. You know, you can look it up. I've been riding for the city and just to see what they're doing on every type of scale from acting to basketball to hockey to baseball to, you know, podcast to, to music. You know, just to see the city as a whole grow makes me, brings me a lot of joy. Because yeah. I've been someone that's always been trying to push not only this city, but the whole country of Canada, 
felt like I was, it was always my obligation to put it on that type of world map, you know, since we came out of this thing. Yeah, for sure. And obviously your early career, um, you know, catapulted in America, you know, so now having the opportunity for you to come back every summer, what are different ways you, you try to continue to push the envelope for Canadian athletes coming up? Yeah. Um, you know, it's just like now they they know they could be confident. Like you saw how, how the doors opened up with like the guys that didn't felt like they didn't have to go to school in the States or they could be home and get a scholarship and be seen here. Mm. And that's just the power of social media, how much we've grown as a whole, as a society. It's like, you know, everyone could be seen, which is dope. You know, that's cool. Now you don't have to go away from your family and have that sacrifice. But I think the the pluses for me doing that, I have tough skin, bro. You know, I'm tough because I had to go away when I was 14. Yeah. And I had to, you know, say bye to mom, figure it out. Yeah. And literally that gave me tough skin. I don't know. And it's crazy because you went, you're you're leaving Toronto to go to Jer- Jersey, Newark at that. So you know, t- talk to me a little bit about that for people that don't know that story or that sacrifice that comes mm-hmm. with leaving your family at 14 and going to one of the toughest inner cities in Jersey City or in New York, New Jersey. Um, well, well you know. for for everyone coming up, I feel like everyone has a story. Mm. I feel like it's not just mine. I feel like everyone around in the world has a story. So. You got to kind of embrace that. And that's what I've done. I've just embraced it the whole way, the whole journey from, you know, I lived in Jersey and I've lived all around the world, which is a blessing with through the game of basketball, through a round ball. So just taking that sacrifice, I kind of knew then and there what I wanted to do. And I'm thankful for the parents that I have that kind of like said, all right, you know, you want to go do this. We'll let you, you know, not a lot of parents are going to let a 14-year-old just go Especially away. Especially African parents. Hell like that. no, you know how it is, <laughs> yeah. girl, what? Yeah. I have to be so good for that year before yeah. I could even sniff, <laughs> even asking my mom, you know. Yeah. House was super clean before she got <laughs> home. <laughs> yeah. Homework done up, yeah. you know what I'm saying? So it was one of those things where um, I was blessed to have parents that, like, believed in me. And, um, yeah, you know, I was just thankful to obviously have this journey where I, I knew exactly what I wanted to do in this world, which was, you know, use the game of basketball and branch off into other areas. And it's going to always open other doors. That's what I want kids to know. You know, you might be in one profession, but you never know what it might lead to next. Like, it's going to be an opening door for, for this and that. So always keep your, your eggs open. Don't always keep your eggs in one basket, as they say. So I've always like listened when, you know, we had special speakers or I was in camp. So that's why it means a lot to me, you know, mm. because um, the places that I've been to and I've went to these places have had an effect on my life. And it's a part of me that I always like carry on. And I feel like I've been motivated and I've been inspired by so many great people around the world and in my life. That is like kind of reflection. And I carry that and I embody that whenever, you know, I walk in this earth. Yeah, and it's crazy. And that's why, like you said, even, um, you know, you really set the precedent for these kids at the camp telling them, you know, you never you never know who you're going to meet, you know, to take things in with, you know, open of, of ears and, you know, to really lock in, you know, because, you know, when you're open enough to learn, that's when things change for you. Right. You know what I mean? And, um, you know, you talking about your experiences there, you had the opportunity to go to, you know, the LeBron James skills camps and, you know, being a McDonald's All-American and stuff. So you're talking about a, a different multitude of experiences in your career, you know, and, you know, now like kids are looking up to you like the OG. So who is that early influence for you when you were coming up in your respective uh, community or your field of, or even, you know, your a teammate or somebody that you looked up to in your journey? Oh uh, man, I had so many great influences. Uh, I've been lucky um, from starting at home, home base. My mom, my dad, obviously, they've installed hard work and resiliency. That's where that comes from. I've seen, um, you know, we lived in Africa and we came to Canada and figured it out. So that kind of resilience, crazy. That's in my bloodline. Then from there, being here and uh, learning from great teachers, you know, I couldn't speak English and you think English is my first language now, but... Um, like, I'm thankful for Miss McBride. Like, I remember these people. Like, I'm that, you know? Oh, yeah, crazy memory <laughs> bank, bro. <laughs> I'm, th- I'm that anal. Yeah. About things, excuse me. But uh, Mr. Papa Christos, Mrs. Franklin, huge, 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 huge help. 
And then from there, Mr. Bullen, Mr. Roy Rana, mm. down at Eastern Commerce. Um, then going to States, Dan Hurley. Um, Shout out to Hurley Dennis, one time. You know what I mean? Uh, Rick Barnes, um, Rodney Terry, Rob Lanier, um, Coach Springman, Chris Ogden. Um, man, the list can go Coach Pop. Um, the list can go on and on. So Jelani, Vidal, Messiah. Um, my OBA coaches, Vlad. My, the list can go on and on about the inspiration I didn't have. So I'm just someone that's always, um, I always show gratitude when it's present. And um, if I forgot you, you know I didn't because I'm someone that, you know, when I talk to you, you always know that I'm thankful mm-hmm. for everything that you've done for me to in my career or help me grow as a person. So, you know, I make sure I always make sure to show love, you know, when it's time. Yeah, for sure. And, you know, as an athlete, obviously, somebody like yourself, there's so many people that have an imprint on you, you know, and you talk about the teacher, or the trainer, you know, even, you know, somebody you done worked out with. You know, I had an opportunity to work out with you on various occasions. <laughs> that was an influence in itself. Hey, you hey, know, we got like, it in, by it, the way. You know, it's like. I'm surprised like, you didn't throw it. It's like, it's like <laughs> you think you're working hard, and then you're like, nah, this, this is a different <laughs> level, yeah, you know? Yeah, yeah. Sure. Um, yeah, man. So it's it's crazy. Now turning to to the NBA a little bit, um, you know, talking about the the life in the bubble or the whole bubble season, and and w- what are your thoughts on that? Well, I think that the NBA did a good job for keeping it safe for the players and the staff that worked there and uh, committed themselves to being away from their family and friends, and um, you know, rolling the dice on an, on on a chance that you know a lot of people had a lot of their eyebrows lifted and didn't think it was going to be possible. But the fact that they got through however much it was with not a lot of new cases and everyone was safe there just shows um, the job that Adam Silver and everyone at the NBA are doing, you know. They knew what they were doing with this. So it's kind of cool to see that everyone was safe. And, uh, you know, we got a new crown champion. And, you know, now it's back to the drawing tables, I'm pretty sure, for them. But it was just cool to see that everyone was safe. Yeah, for sure. And it was – I feel like bubble basketball was different, man. Oh, yeah, we got to see who could really hoop. hoop. Yeah. By the way, if you want to talk about that. Yeah, for sure. Everyone knows. If you know you could hoop, you know, it was one of those, like, you know, you could hoop, hoop. We got to see. Yeah, for sure, man. And uh, talk about the Lakers and the Miami matchup, bro. That was a crazy series, man. A lot of of guys really stepped up. Duncan Robinson, man, he was a three-point specialist, bro. Uh, uh, You know, and Braun obviously was Braun. uh, You know, so talk about that. Um, You know, obviously Braun winning his fourth title with his third team. It's crazy. Where where do you rank Braun on your I guess your your goat list? <laughs> um, you know, I feel like you can we were all always caught up on this comparing thing and I'm at a point where I'm like more so appreciating people when we're they're in front of us. Mm-hmm. And I feel like more so than ever, let's appreciate him for what he is, you know. Mm-hmm. Um he's gotten us ten straight, you know, championships to finals and he's won four of them things now. And, you know, let's just appreciate him for what he is. And as far as the NBA goes, uh, it's specialist. You know, it's a specialist league. So you have to be a specialist at what you do. And obviously the superstar is a superstar that can do it all. But, you know, um, a guy like Duncan can go crazy. Tyler mm. Harrow can go crazy. Saw none can go nuts. Mm. And then, you know, someone like Danny, who's my boy, shout out to DG. Congratulations to you, dog. You deserve it. Um, you know, the fact that, you know, you can see him being on a slump and then dig yourself out the hole. Mm-hmm. You know, that's like championship mentality that, you know, you can't teach. You know, that's that pedigree that's in your DNA. So um, it's kind of cool just to see you guys and, and seeing them win and, you know, performing at that high level, especially in the bubble where it was tough, man. Yeah. You're away from your family and friends. It, it's not easy. Yeah, four months, man. You know, you really got to lock in and be committed. Yeah. But that's how it is overseas, you know. If you go overseas, it's low key like that, you know. Mm. So it's kind of like we're already in isolation when you're out there, you know. I'm doing it now seven years. It's like you know what it's like. It's kind of like you're in a bubble, you know. You have to adjust. You're in a whole new culture, new language, food, um, time zone. Mm. You know, you got to readjust your sleep. So many things you got to do when you go away. So uh, that's why I always say, man, when you, whenever you're over there and in overseas, it's the trenches, man. The word. Man, when you make it out that thing, I'm telling you, you built a little different. So Yeah, for sure. What's your, I guess, your favorite uh, city that you played in or country that you played in in your, in your professional career? Uh, my favorite city, 
And the favorite country I would say that I played in was definitely in Spain, mm. by far. Uh, just that peace uh, felt different. Just to, when you have a peace of mind, that's priceless. And that's what I, it felt like when I was out there. It's just sleeping, waking up with a fresh mind, going to practice, happy, excited, bouncy. Loved my teammates, loved my coaches, and we were winning. Mm. For me, I'm so competitive. If yeah, you know me, you know me. For sure, bro. I'm only happy when I'm winning, bro. That's why it's one of my favorite places. We were winning and beating people's, you know, we, you know. Yeah. You know, like 20, 20 plus. That's that's how I feel good. Yeah, AAU right days. There. That's like AAU days, yeah. bro. You know, that's what makes me feel good, bro. Yeah. We're beating teams by 20 plus. We go on the road. Fans were talking crazy before the game. Had the signs. You know how it go. We leave on the bus. We were up 10. Good, because you know we playing against the referees. You know, mm. road game is really eight on five. Yeah, for sure. Then you can add the fans onto it. Yeah, but it's one of those things. That, for me, winning, nothing feels better than winning to me. Yeah, for sure. And c- congrats on the deal. Um, you know, you signing your contract. I just wanted to give you your your flowers man. when you can, man. Already, man. Yeah, for don't sure. Don't stop. The grind don't stop, though. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And obviously, when you're when you're overseas, you talked about writing albums you said you wrote an album when you yeah. was overseas 100 percent. yeah talk to me a little bit about that and the <laughs> creative process while you when you're not on the court you're writing rhymes bro well it's like it's just like finding another passion um it's always healthy to find another passion um i feel like when you have um your eggs in one basket all in one basket you could like be so caught up in it stressed out mm. that you need an outlet you need a release so for me it's with the music um, I know a lot of kids that, you know, are so driven, you know, ball is life. We all hear it. We all live it. I live it, but you can't really live it. You know, it's okay to have a bad game. You know, I know how I felt like, you know, when I did had a bad game, yo, bro, I would not talk to anybody in a dark room. You know what I mean? Phone off, didn't, but you know, it's okay. It's life, you know, and then now with social media and I know the pressures that they face with that, it's like, whoa, we could drive you off the ledge. So for me, it's like, you know, finding another another passion. And not only that, you know, I love reading books, bro. I love reading, just period. I love reading things that, like, are entertaining to me. Mm-hmm. And that's sports, you know. I just love analyzing things. Um, I love reading news. And just, you know, doing different things, going on walks. You know, I got my eyes done. So don't think I'm Hollywood wearing these glasses, <laughs> by the way, in this whole interview. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I got my eyes done, so that's why... <laughs> I'm wearing these glasses. Uh, but, um, yeah, just going on walks, I'm simple, you know. But, yeah, you know, writing albums is something that I'm, I'm good at. I'm really good with the pen. Um, and I'm only going to get nicer just because I'm always continuing to read. I'm always continuing to listen. I'm hearing stories from different parts of the world. Mm. And I'm learning different, you know, people, cultures. And yeah, I put it into my little, you know, pen and pad and we get it rocking. Yeah, for sure. Talk about um, your upcoming projects. I know you you released a lot of music uh, over the summer. I had an opportunity to listen to a lot of your music. So do you have any upcoming projects in, in the near future coming? And if uh, when are we ex- when can we expect that? Uh, well, for now, it's just like uh, I'm super dived in into basketball now mm. because I, summer's over. You know, you go into these phases, you know, everyone knows when it's summertime, it's summertime now. And it's time to grind, it's time to grind. So I have this project that I'm getting ready to release called The X Factor that I kind of completed throughout the summer. Um, I'm just going to leave it, let it sit with y'all. There's a lot to digest. Um, it's going to really be good for the, you know, if you really listen to our lyrics and listening to storytelling and listening to kind of like that, music with some substance that, a little that, bit. That real music. Yeah, you know, just a little substance. Just yeah. A little substance is going to sit down and make you think things and, um, you know. Feel good, feel good too, you know, because I know when I release it, it's just to make other people feel good. Whatever you're going through, I hope it can help you release, and, you know. That's why I make the music, it's for the people. And that's what my, my, my name means, you know, Lucus means, you know, the voice of the people, you know, well, worships over evil. So for me, it's one of those things where I'm just continuing to try and get better at the craft. Um, you know, it's a little talent that I have, I'm thankful for it. Mm-hmm. And I just hope to continue to make it grow. Yeah, for sure, and you know, or, you collabing now with uh, a lot of Toronto-based artists as well. That's pretty dope to see the sense of collaboration because it's pretty rare in our city, Mm -hmm. you know, so having an opportunity now where you can kind of collab and kind of tap into your your network is really dope, man. And like I said, I'm looking forward to hearing some some dope lyrics, some upbeat music, some workout music too, bro. Man, I think the city of Toronto has so much talent. It's not just uh, 
in basketball sports and everything, but I just want to tap into the music where we have so much talent here and we have this thing and the stigma. I know a lot of people think about it, about people not supporting each other, but I think now more than ever, um, you know, we're bridging that gap. I'm seeing a lot of people um, collaborate with artists from different areas of the city. And I think that needs to happen a little bit more. Yeah. Cause I think the more they see that, the more the next generation could see like, all right, damn, you know, the guy from the West is cool with the guy from the East. All right, it's not that deep, you know? Cause I know there's a lot of things that go under underlining and under layers in the, in the music industry. You know, I just want to be here to tell y'all, you know what I mean? Let's get this money, let's get it right. You know, cause the city has so much talent, man. So much talent, it's the best music to me in the whole wide world. You know, when you go around the world and you hear artists from Toronto, it's different. So for me, I just want to see, um, you know, artists from the city more than ever, you know, show love while it's here. Let's boost our own artists because we do have the talent. And uh, let's take over the music industry. Look, Atlanta doing it. Why can't we? Yeah. Why can't we? Yeah, and you, you talked about, um, you know, repping the brands of your of your, your friends and really supporting. And, you know, I think that's a very, very interesting topic because a lot of, like, we talk about um, wearing designer or supporting these brands that don't really mean anything to us. So just talk about the importance of, you know, promoting um, brands such as your own brand uh, mm-hmm. or if your friend started a brand, the importance of, you know, kind of supporting um, startups or black businesses. Mm-hmm. What are your thoughts on that? Uh, we were just talking today with a couple of my friends and like ownership is everything now. And, you know, it's always going to be challenging when you're starting from the ground up. You know, of course, you're going to have those times where like your lights might cut off. You might not think your lights might cut on tomorrow. And it's like, dang, we're struggling to make ends meet. And I figure, you know, it's never going to be easy in something that you want, and, you know, especially in great things. So I want people to know that entrepreneurs and all that out there that are starting up in these businesses. It's like it's never going to be easy. And you just have to keep plugging away. It's like in every every avenue of life, bro. You just got to keep plugging away, keep plugging away. And that's with everything. So that's how I have to say it with that. You know, I just feel like as long as you keep plugging away, um, your brand's going to be seen. It's going to be heard. And it's up to, obviously, the people in your inner circle and in your city and then, you know, your neighborhood. And then from there, your country. And then we pushing it. And then we can make it on the, the scales of a whatever Louis Vuitton, of course. I'm a, Obviously, I'm thinking of the, the top, top, of yeah. course, as you always you compare, right? You, we know what the best is. So, um, you know, it'd be to, it would be so dope. Imagine to see your friend that started his clothing company and reach a level of Louis Vuitton, you know? So it, it's up to us to obviously always support and to the people that are doing it, the entrepreneurs that are doing it, you know, continue to plug away and don't stop. Yeah, for sure. And I, w- I was listening to um, the All The Smoke podcast uh, a couple of days ago, and they had Charlemagne on there, and he was talking about his latest venture, um, The Black Effect, which is an a audio podcast uh, agency. And basically they're giving um, black entrepreneurs or black entrepreneur-based podcasts the opportunity to kind of monetize off of his platform. And he said he was kind of doing it for the like the same similar reason, kind of to give them an opportunity to build their brands mm-hmm. instead of building up all these podcasts that are already built up. Let me now give an opportunity to somebody like that just started a podcast, say like myself or, right. you know, the guy across the street, right. you know, and I feel like if we continue to take that turn, things will be different, yeah. you know, but I think, like you said, it just stems from mentality. You know, I feel like the like you said, the stigma here in Toronto, everybody wants to kind of compete with each other. But, you know, in America, it's kind of a little different where it's right. just like, there's everybody, you know, there's enough pie for everybody to uh, eat. You right. know what I mean? It's like the authenticity to things, you know. It's like, we already know you're valid. You don't got to show no more. Mm. You know, we already know you're valid. Just do what you got to do, and let's, let's see how we can make that even better. So, um, you know, just keep it authentic. Do it with the love. And when you do it with the love, a lot of things come back to you in a way that you wouldn't imagine, bro. So. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And, you know, I wanted to obviously talk to you a little bit about the music thing in terms of like your influence or uh, yeah, yeah. some what, what, what you kind of listen to and, yeah. you know, get inspired by when you're listening to music. Um, me being a guy that listens to lyrics, man, like I love listening to J. Cole because right. he has a unique storytelling ability as much as Nas as well, too. Right. You know, so who are some guys that you listen to for specific reasons when it comes to music? I listen to everything. You know, I just heard about this band called Le Bouche today that I'm going to go take in. So I'm that kind of guy. When I hear things on the fly, I'm going to go take it in. Mm. I've never been close-minded. Um, I listen to Lady Gaga to 21 Savage in a day. Oh, Gaga was hot, though. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> like, I'm that yeah, guy. Is, yeah, Gaga's that, hot, though. <laughs> I'm that guy. I'm yeah. not someone that's like, oh, I can't listen to this. Like, I went to school in Texas. I listened to George Strait, for goodness sakes. 
So I'm um, listening to a bunch of everything. Yeah. I support my friends. Mm. I like all my boys that are in the city getting hot, doing their thing. Um, yeah, so for me, it's just like, I listen to everybody, man. Puffy L's, Devontae Woe, Jimmy Prime, mm. uh, uh, Safe. I like, uh, who's that dude? The big dude. He got a like, nice little funny voice. He's dope. He's going crazy. You from the city? Yeah, he got this 0109. Yeah. Record that's going crazy right now. He had a dope video too. I Damn. forget his name, but his joint go crazy. Mm. He's tough. I like uh, Smoke, you know, Dog. I'm still listening to guys from the East End. I'm still listening to, uh, um, what's his name? Um, Gilly? Is it Gilly? Gilly. 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 K I L L Y. Gilly. Oh, um, how do you say his name? Man. Uh, oh, Kile or Kel. Yeah, I think Kelly. Kelly. Yeah, however you say his yeah. name. Um, Presta. Uh, you know, I listen to everybody, man. Presta. You know, you know, I like every every type of music. I listen to everybody. Um, if you're dope, you're in my iPod, in my ears, and then, yeah, yeah, for sure. Afro beats. Yep. Yep. Go crazy. Everything. That, that playlist Gospel. hits different. We listen to it all. Yeah, that's what's up, man. All. Yeah, yo, I, I was going to uh, ask you a little bit about that. Uh, the Brooklyn Nets, man, Steve Nash got that head coaching job. Right. Um, what is your, your take? Obviously, Steve Nash is somebody that, you know, was more of a mentor to you in your life. How do you right. think that's going to kind of, you know, unfold with his situation in Brooklyn and now him having the opportunity to reignite with Kevin Durant and work with um, Kyrie Irving? Well, congratulations to Steve Nash to get a position like that. Uh, someone that's very respected in the basketball community. Um, he's putting his work um, to call him a mentor and a friend. I'm blessed and lucky to have been around him, learn from him. And if you know basketball, you know a point guard, and his position entails for him to know one through five. I got to know what he's doing, two's doing, four's doing. You got to know that. So as a coach, I think his X's and O's are going to be on point. Um, just knowing as a good human being, he's a great human being. Um, he's gonna understand, you know, managing personalities because that's what the NBA is. Everyone's talented. As a coach, you gotta be able to manage these personalities and make it work and all coming into one common goal and how we're gonna make this thing work and win. It's about winning at that level. So, um, you know, I think he's gonna be great, a great coach. He was a great point guard, a great player. And history shows someone that plays that position and knows what it entails to be a point guard and a great quarterback. For those of y'all that need an analogy to make it a little make make sense to you, that's what Steve is, and I think he's going to do a great job. Yeah, and you know there was a lot of sideway noise about him not being qualified for that matter. But hey, man, if you if you're a hooper, like yeah, he, and it was justified, you know. Of course, it was justified. Of course, of what was going on around the world. Mm -hmm which everyone is entitled to their own opinion, right? We can't dismiss anyone's opinion, but it's to also say, have your opinion, but don't go over the fact that this man is not uh, you know, qualified for this position because he is. Yes, that conversation matters. It counts. Mm -hmm. I agree, but also I agree with this too because this makes sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and there's a lot of... Oper there's a lot of other things that kind of played a factor, like the relationship that Nash had with Steve Marks, um, you know, the ho whole continuity of, you know, his relationship with Kevin Durant for that matter and stuff like that. So, you know, I, to kind of echo your message, man, I think he's going to do an incredible job with the young guys, um, a guy like Kyrie Irving, who I see similarities in their games from, you know, more of a cerebral standpoint, you know what I mean? And, you know, a guy like you understanding how the point guard position is in the NBA and how it's changing. You know, I think he's going to really excel Kyrie's game to the next level. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. So um, how do you think they do next season? Uh, If I knew what I was going to do in 30 minutes and have, like, a for sure answer, I'll tell you. Mm. So I could not tell you what the New Jersey Nets are going to be doing next year. Mm. You know, so yeah. much can go into – we might not have a season next yeah, year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, it's like the world is going on, the world is happening, and – you know, first and foremost, I'm a person that's a realist, so I hope, like, we can figure this thing out as a society mm -hmm. before we think about sports again. And then, like, you know, when we tap back into the sports, then we tap back into it. But 
you know, now that I have this platform and I'm on this stage to talk with you, we always got to address the bigger issue at hand. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So many changes happening right now and that's going on. And, you know, if I didn't say that's more important than what's happening next year with the Brooklyn Nets, then I'd be sleeping. Yeah. You know? So I just got to say, you know, I hope, you know, I can't tell what's going to happen with that. But if there's something that I could hope and that I could change and have a prediction for is just, you know, everything that's going on with social injustices and everything that's going on around the world right now with COVID and people dying. Hope we can get to grips with that yeah. before we talk about sports, you know, some more. Yeah, for sure. And, you know, for yourself, what are what are ways you can kind of advocate for change in, in, in your community or, you know, in your circles that you've been around? Um, you know, how do you think you can continue to push the conversation forward right. in terms of the social injustices within our communities? It starts from the top, you know. Not a lot of change won't happen until the top, you know. It's a trickle effect. So until we can get it right up there, you know, they're the example we see. So if it ain't right up there, how do you think we gonna be up here? You know, down here, I should say. So for me, it's just, you know, little by little, I'm doing my part, you do your part. You know, they do their part. You do your part with the people you encounter with. Mm. You know, show kindness, show gratitude. And that will start to kind of make its way around and it's round. So, you know, we don't have all the answers. I don't got the answers. I ain't gonna sit here and pretend like I do. But as much as I can, you know, when I'm around people, you know, I'm showing that kind of love and I'm showing what's good to make them feel like, all right, damn, let me pass this thing on. And then, you know, little by little. Yeah, for sure. And, you know, I think it's a very important, um, you know, the littlest ways, but we must continue to to use our voices and uh, our platform to kind of advocate for change, whether it's, you know, supporting, you know, a, a law that might be passed and, and, you know, the, the curriculum, you know, whether it's, you know, educating, because I think that education is, you know, the the next step to success for our community, you know, kind of getting back into the, the history of, of Africa or, or why things are the way they are and, you know, teaching these kids that, you know, things will change when we change our mindset. So I think education is a, a big role that we got to kind of tap into in our communities and you know, having a lot of leaders like yourself in these communities where you can kind of tap in and tell these kids, um, educate them on ways they can, you know, prepare for a better tomorrow. 100%. Yeah, for real. And, you know, even in sports, too, we see guys like LeBron James and, you know, Chris Paul and other athletes who I didn't mention are doing amazing, amazing job in that sport. And, you know, obviously um, Adam Silver now, you know, pushing the conversation in the, the Players Association is big because I feel like, Going forward, if we have, you know, the, the NBA in coalition with the players, bro, right. things are going to change. Right. You and know, I, and uh, I just want to tap into this also. It's not just, uh, you know, which is great. I think athletes are doing a great job. Mm -hmm. uh, they have that platform. But I also want to give uh, to the frontline workers, like people that are taking their time out. We got a lot of people that are not getting the, the you know, the credit, the credit where it's due. You know what I'm saying? We have these little people that are in these communities that are donating here and there when they can. So shout out to you for making the impact when you can in your neighborhood. I'm here to say shout out to you. You know what I'm saying? There might be some people that just, you know, walk into their deli, the, the, the regular Joe Dismo is working his nine to five. But guess what? He's making the time to go volunteer at a homeless shelter. Shout out to you. That's, you're doing that. You know what I'm saying? I know we have the, the, the athletes and all, you know, everyone that's a celebrity speaking on this and, and doing their parts. But, you know, kudos to them. Hats off to y'all, but also hats off to y'all frontline workers, the people that are out there really getting it in. Yeah, for sure, man. And, you know, like I said, hey, you know, it's not easy. You know, it's not easy every day you wake up in uncertainty, and especially in business, man, when you're trying to develop and, and scale and, you know, you can't really kind of see what's next. It's it's hard, you know, but like you said, you got to just keep plugging away and, you know, be grateful to be in a position to serve and, and to lead and to inspire the, the future generations of leaders. Um, so I wanted to play a little game or, uh, I don't really call it a game, but it, uh, we call it this or that, where I kind of throw rapid questions right. to you and then you cool. kind of answer, you know? So, um, if you can have, like, if you were trapped on an Island, uh, what are three things you couldn't live without? God. Okay. <laughs> Music. Okay. The people I love. Okay, 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 <laughs> okay, okay. That's a nice one. Okay, 
uh, what is what is a dream day consist of for you? What's a dream day to Mike? What is it fulfilled with? I got two answers. All right. If I'm hungry, rice and beans and chicken. I'm Gucci. <laughs> <laughs> Some carbonara pasta too. But if not that, um, a great day for me mm-hmm. is, um, you know, people that I love, Gucci, they're good, mm-hmm. no problems. Um, around some sun, can't do the cold. Can't do the cold. Oh, man, L.A., L.A. weather you, then for you or anywhere yeah. hot. Africa weather. Ooh, <laughs> that's what's up. <laughs> yes, sir, back to put the motherland. Some, put some sunscreen on. <laughs> yeah, all right, 7 a.m. workout or 7 p.m. workout? 7 a.m. 7 a.m., mm-hmm. okay. Early, early riser then. 100%. Okay, that's what's up. You want to get your work in early. 100%. Yep. Um, dead or alive, top five dinner guests. Like, if you could have, like, dinner with five guests, dead or alive, who would it be? All right. Um, Giovanni, five. Mm-hmm. Four. Michael Jackson. Mm. Three. Martin Luther King, MLK. Two. Steve Jobs. One. Uh, Gotta talk to Ye. Kanye? Yeah. Okay. Creativity wise. Gotta talk to Ye right now. Okay. Okay. Sure. Yeah, he different. Yeah. Yeah, and then um, one book that you would recommend to, you know, um, you know your, I guess your best friend. Ooh. Um, one book. Uh, it didn't start with us right now. I'm reading it. It's like a, like a story about just like, in a book about psychology and how like certain problems that go within your life or anything that you're probably past traumas that you face. It didn't start with you. It's, you know, it's, it's a passed on gene that probably started from your great, great grandparents and, you know, it continues to trickle down into your family. So it's kind of trying to show you how to break that cycle and like kind of break that mold. So it's kind of a book for me right now. Okay. And what was your last book that you read? Uh, prior to that, my girl, we were trying to read these like, uh, you know, the movement's happening right now. Mm. So we had a bunch of books at the house that, like, we've been trying to tap into. But honestly, I was, like, so trapped into the, the writing process of these albums that I yeah. didn't get. But we have a stack of those that I got to get to. Mm. I got to get to. It's by some black artists, obviously, uh, black authors um, that are writing about what's going on right now. Um, and I got to tap into that. Yeah, we gotta we gotta uh, swap some books one day, bro. Hundred yeah. percent. Let's get to it. Yeah, for sure. And uh, we always end our segment with a, a message to the youth. Yeah. Um. So I'll leave you with you know that closing message that you can kind of give to the youth, which is future generation of leaders, athletes, entrepreneurs, um, black congressmen. You yeah. know, just something that you or a message you can give to your younger self. All right. Uh, find what you love. Do it with a passion. Treat people with gratitude. Be kind. Be nice, and uh, always keep God first. That's it. Yep, you heard it from the the myth, the man, the legend himself. Um, and you know, obviously myself, man, I always want to you know end on a good note. But hey, man, thank you for you know always you know supporting and Bro. and always pushing me to my limits yeah. as a as a friend. But you know, always supporting the crazy ideas that I have, man. And <laughs> hey, bro, I've seen the growth. Honestly, it's only gonna get better. Like I told you before. And I tell you again, thank you for having me. It's an honor. And uh, the sky's the limit, you know, for the platform that you're given, not only for the people and a voice in the city that needs to be heard. I mean, you're giving voices to some guys that I've seen that you've had prior to on this show that are definitely respected in their fields and legends in my eyes. So I'm very, very grateful that you have me here. And um, anytime you need me, you know what to do. For yeah, right. sure, bro. You always yeah, got a, right. a seat on our platform, man. Right. So let our let our audience know where they can uh, follow you or get in contact with you via um, Instagram. Um, follow me wherever you want to lead them to. I got two. I got Kabongo Fire for my basketball endeavors, and, and I got my music page, Lucusa Music. That's L U K U S A Music. And uh, from then on is where you're gonna hear a lot more from me when I go away. When I'm going away playing, you know, I'm just gonna be releasing music to kind of keep people up to date when I'm away playing in Europe. 
Yeah, for sure. So we're checking out. Um, I'm your host, Twin GQ. I want to check out on episode five on a culture conversation. Please be sure to subscribe to our channel on YouTube as well as our podcast on major streaming platforms. Check it in and check it out with my man, Mike. Peace. All right.